CataractCoach.com, a tough cataract case with a corneal scar. Now, this patient had a prior pterygium surgery, which ended up with a corneal perforation. Now, you can see there's a big, huge scar here over the eye, and there was a perforation. You can see the correctopia, or the shifting of the pupil there. Now, I would sit temporally to do this surgery. I'd sit away from this area. Surgeons made a paracentesis there, putting a little tripan blue dye in, which can be helpful, certainly to visualize in a case like this. Hey, RetinaRounds.com is our sister channel. It's already up and going. It is amazing. A new video every day. The RetinaRounds podcast. It's also fantastic for cataract surgeons, I promise. It's not just esoteric topics. You'll love it. Now, putting in some iris hooks. I think that's a wise move. To expand this pupil is probably very important. Now, you can see there are some sneakier there. And you may also have iris plugging up that corneal perforation, which is there at the nasal limbus. So I'd be very cautious about that. If you yank that iris out of there, you may have a repeat of that perforation. Now, here's another pair going in for maybe another iris hook. So, yep, here we go. Plenty of iris hooks. So now you've got exposure here. And you can see the patient has to have this central cataract that does need to be removed. Now, how do you do lens calculations in an eye like this? Again, there's the main incision. I tend to want to make that main incision away from all this area. How would you do the calculations? Well, again, myopia is your friend. And it's okay if the patient ends up with a bit of a myopic target. So here's the capsorexis going down. I like the light pipe on the side to give extra illumination. That can be very helpful. In a case like this, I would get the IOL out of the capsular bag, or the, the nucleus, sorry, out of the capsular bag. And then it'll be a lot easier for us to implant the IOL. I like this technique. It's not a very dense cataract. Emulsifying it here, again, very limited view, but sufficient view to perform the cataract. And then just get that chopper in the safe position at the end, just to make sure that you don't get the capsule coming up. Now, when you do the cortex removal, again, here is where that light pipe can be helpful for that tangential lighting. So a little more viscoelastic, maybe you can visco dissect. A bimanual approach is also smart. I do like that idea. Again, for the lens power calculations, I'd probably figure out what do you think the average central corneal power is, calculate, and then add at least a diopter two to the eyewall power. Again, a little myopia is always your friend here. And so now cleaning up the cortex, and obviously the patient always going to get a monofocal lens here. Now, sometimes you'll be saying, why don't you just do a corneal transplant too at the same time? Well, you could. But remember, a lot of these eyes, you'd be surprised how much vision they can achieve by just fixing the cataract. A lot of patients who've had these corneal scars for a long time are kind of used to it and may do okay. Now, you also may be in a part of the world where it's not so easy to get tissue for a corneal transplant, and that's okay too. So again, or you can do it in a stepwise approach here. So here we go, putting in the IOL, going in the capsule bag, looks like a single piece monofocal acrylic, that looks pretty good, and get that position here. Now, I would really be careful. Again, make sure all your incisions are very well sealed at the end here, including all these four paras for the iris hooks. And then also, I probably would not do much more manipulation of the iris. Now, could you do a big old pupiloplasty here? Sure. But again, if you yank that iris out of that nasal site of corneal perforation, you're probably just going to get a repeat perforation, which would be a hot mess to fix. So again, I think the answer here is what we learned in med school. First, do no harm, right? So at the end here, let's seal up the incisions. I'd call it a day here and not do any more manipulation. And again, if I was doing this case, what I've learned over the years is I'd probably make my incision temporally, my phaco incision. I'd avoid making any incisions in the area where you have this conj overgrowth or where you had that perforation, etc. You really want to avoid all that. Leave that be. And you can come back another day if you, if you finally get tissue for corneal transplant. Go for it. But again, I'd be very cautious here. Just clean it up. Make sure it's absolutely watertight. Do a Seidel test with a fluorescein dye. And the patient will be pretty happy. Hey, check out retinarounds.com. And of course, I know you're subscribing to the Cataract Coach Podcast, the top podcast in all of ophthalmology, which teaches you how to be a more successful ophthalmologist.